done with the task? How many of you guys done with the task? Guys. All right, so what was the last topic we discussed on? On DNS enumeration, right? So how many of you done with that part? Like how many of you done with the DNS enumeration? And how many of you guys uh, done with the task? Like any new uh, tools you guys have found? Hmm. Yeah, you guys can respond in chat. Try to respond in chat, everyone. Like, how many of you done with the task? And is there any doubts related to the previous topic? Just please uh, respond in the chat, everyone. Mm -hmm. Guys, <clears throat> I'm asking you only. How many have you done with the task? Just let me know. And is there any doubts related to the previous one? Yeah. No doubts, right? Okay, now I can see the chart. No, so no. All right. So everyone, just don't share your task. Uh, I'll give the form for you guys. So try to share the task in that form only. I like in the drive. So don't share now in the chat box. Just stop. Don't share the task. Just hold it. At the end, I'll tell you like uh, uh, how you can share the task and where you have to share that. Okay. Is that clear? Is that clear? So don't share your task on the chat. I'll share the link. So please try to share in there. Okay. All right. So in the last session, what we discussed about the DNS enumeration, right? Yes. All right. So do you have any doubts related to that? Oh, you're absent. Fine. All good. Great. So now uh, we'll discuss about uh, employee details, how we can enumerate these uh, employee details. So what are the sources we have to enumerate these employee details? So actually, uh, where you can find the employee details, like what are the platforms we have to find the employee details? Like public platforms. Let's discuss about the public platforms. So what are the public platforms we have where to find these employees' information? Anyone? Where, where, where you can find the employee information? What was the platform you guys are aware of? Any, any idea? No? So let's see how we can enumerate the employee details. So for that, again, I'm going to use a source called GitHub. So how many of you guys have practiced on this uh, 
sublister or non by tools enumerating the subdomains how many of you how many of you practiced the last session topics like using the github Anyone try? Right? So if you see <clears throat> to gather the employees information, I'm going to find some GitHub repositories. So let me check for the GitHub. So in the before that, first we need to know in which platform we can find the employee details. So what are the platforms we have which are available for public, not, <clears throat> not a private scenario, in public basis. So is there any platform where we can find the employee details in public level or any social networking platform where we can find the employee details, the roles and responsibilities in that organization? Can you find them? In any public platforms? Is there any platform where we can find the uh, employee details here? Hmm? Yes or no? Just try, try it. Let me know in which platform we can find the employee's information. What are the platforms we have? What are the social networking platforms we have to gather the employee's information? All right, so here uh, we can say we have a platform called LinkedIn. Do you guys aware of LinkedIn platform? So in LinkedIn, you can see a, a person profile in that dimension, like a, as a security analyst uh, or a, a security professional or a, a CISSP certified or something, the role or uh, whatever the employee information, you can find it through the social media platform. So for that, I'm going to use a tool called the Harvester. So it's an open source tool, as we discussed in last session. And when you type the Harvester tool, yeah, even in company website, but you won't, they won't keep all the employees details. Like Max, you can find the CEO, founder, co-founder, all, or the CDO, or the HR or manager. This information only you can find, not not the other person's information, right? So. I have I got some uh, open source platform for you that is the Harvester platform where you can find the employee details in this. Uh, but again, uh, you can't go with multiple requests right, because the Google will block your IP. So again, you need to change the IP address or you need to connect to some other network or you need to wait for a few hours. And then again, you can retry with this tool, right? So let me show you how you can gather the information. So currently, if you say I'm running a version 4.4.4, the Harvester version, 4.4.4 we are running. So when you go with the harvester, iPhone, iPhone help, when I run this, you can see how this tool is gathering the information using these sources. Can you see the sources? Last time we used DNS dumpster, right? Subdomain finder or a, a virus total, right? Or security trials we used, CRT.sh we used, right? And we use census. So you can see using these sources and having the APIs of these sources, this tool is collecting the information from those sources and giving the output for you. So, and even if you remember, we extracted the subdomains using this tool, right? So even you can do many things. Okay. So in this, is there any source which related to the LinkedIn? Is there any source which is related to the LinkedIn? Is there any LinkedIn source here in this? Even we don't have Google also. Only the Baidu. You can see the Baidu search engine. Bevgil, uh, Binary Edge, Bing, Bing API, Buffer Overrun, Bio, Brave Browsers, Sensor. So using some search engines and some other open source platforms, it is collecting the information. So can anyone see, is there any LinkedIn source in this? No, 
So actually in previous version, we have that source, but in latest version, they have removed that source for the privacy reason. So what we can do is, we can get the older version and we can try further. Let's see, uh, let's get back to the uh, Firefox. See, again, you need to open the browser in the Kali itself because we are downloading the tool in the Kali only. So you need to open if Firefox or any, any browser what you can find in the Kali and just go for the harvester. GitHub. So just search for the, the harvester tool. Let me delete these things. In my device, we have already the versions. I'm deleting. All right. So if you see, this is the latest version, and the version we are running currently is in GitHub, we have 4.5.1. Okay. So obviously, as I mentioned in latest version, they have removed, they have removed these LinkedIn, Google, all these resources because of the privacy reason. So what we can do is we can go with the older version. So you can see there are 24 releases here. Can you able to see here? Here at this point, you can see the 24 releases. Click on that. So in this, look for the version 4.0.3. 4 4.5 we have, 4.4. 4.2, 4.3.0, So just get this version. Okay. So let me scroll down. Here you can see the assets in this version only 4.0.3. If you scroll down here, you can see the assets. So just click on the assets. You can get a zip file or tar file. Just, just go with the zip file. Just click on that. And you can see it is released in 2021 version. So see, sometimes you need to get to the older versions also to get more information compared to the latest. In latest, they have limited that information. So because of that, we can't able to find the information. So that is why we are moving on to the older version and downloading them. So just go to that folder. So where it has downloaded? In downloads folder. So just go to your command prompt. So just go to CD, go with LS and see if there are any download folders. Yes, we have a download folder. So CD download folder we need to enter. Why? Right? Because the file is downloaded in this folder only. You can see the file is downloaded, which is the version 4.0.3. And next, what we need to do? It is in zip format. So you need to unzip that file. Means you have to extract that file. So to extract that file, what is the command? Unzip and go with the harvester. Now oh, it has been extracted. We go with ls again, and you can see there is a folder, right? So then go to cd folder, get entered into that folder, and go with ls and see what are the files we have here. So can you see it's a Python based script? And here you can see it's a harvester. This is the tool we need to run, but as I mentioned last time, if it is a Python tool, make sure to check is there any requirement.txt file or not. Did I mention that? In last session, I told you, if any Python related tool you are dumping, so make sure to check is there any requirement.txt file is there or not. Why? Because it contains some prerequisites. So it has some packages to run this tool smoothly. Right. So how you can run this uh, requirement.txt file? So going with pip3 install iphone r requirement.txt. So now it start downloading the requirements. Means the packages. So the, it will try to download the required packages to run this tool. So you can see if it is installing some dependencies also here. Right. So now you're done with the requirement thing. So next, what we can do, we can directly go with the setup file. 
See, make sure when you directly go with the harvester, it is loading the 4.4.4 version, which is the latest version. But we dump the older version, right? So what you have to do is you should not run that directly. So what you have to do is just go with Python. So it's a Python script. So go with Python space tharvester.py. Now if you enter, can you see what version we are using? 4.0.3 means you have to come into this folder and run this py script, python based script and make sure to load that older version. So without giving the python, just if you run the harvester, it will load, load the latest version. Whatever the version the Kali is using, that version will be loaded. So make sure you need to go with python the harvester.py. Okay. And let me go with hyphen hyphen help. Let me check is there. Yeah, can you see? Do we have LinkedIn sources now? And even you have the Google sources also. Can you see that? Previous version, do we have LinkedIn source? Do we have that? No. Right. But now in older version, you can see the LinkedIn source. Why? Because see, most of the employee details you can find in this platform on LinkedIn. So everyone will keep their uh, profile with their roles and the company. Like Akhil working in a you know, segment as a senior secretary and consultant like some other. So blah, blah. So same. You can find those information in LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the best source for you to collect the information about the employees here. So let me go with iPhone B, which is the domain. So we need to check for the domain. Like uh, let me go with Microsoft.com. So let's see the Microsoft employees. And iPhone B, which is nothing but the source. Can you see the source? So which source will give the, the uh, employee details? LinkedIn. If you're going with the emails, Google. If you're going with the subdomains, DNS dumpster. Like that, you can use any source. Or even you can mention all also. But actually, this tool is not configured with some APIs. API is nothing but here, application program interfaces. Using that API only, they are collecting the information from these sources, okay? So let me go with this source like that. LinkedIn and run. So we'll wait for a few minutes. It will start and gather the information from the LinkedIn source and it will give the output. So I think you can do it one or twice, once or twice only. You can't do more than that. Why? Because you can see hundreds of requests it will send per second. So the Google, what Google will do is it will block our IP. Why? Because we are trying to uh, like sending some uh, requests which are not required as when as they can receive. So on that basis, they can block the packets. So yeah. So you can see we got some information like these are the people, like technical talent source or chief information officer. All right. So data engineer. So Satya Nadella, we have Microsoft only these, right? So you can see the Bill Gates. So principal data scientist manager, print Jensen. So you're getting all the all the all the employee details here. And these sources are collected by the LinkedIn source. So this information is collected by the source LinkedIn. Right, you can see all the employee details. So you can see talent manager, chief data analyst, and the AI officer. Right. So what what can I do by gathering this information? What can I do by gathering all this information? I can almost 323 uh, users they have found in LinkedIn who are working in Microsoft. So what can I do with this information? Can anyone? What is the use of collecting these employee details and their roles? What can I do with this information now? I can perform some social engineering here. Means I can impersonate the person. So impersonation is nothing but pretending to be a legitimate here. So I can say that I'm working in that company and my role is technical program manager and my name is Prachi Singh and I can create some fake identity here. I can create a fake identity here. And I can start impersonating as a, a Prachi Singh here. And I can do or intrude into the systems network. 
or organizations infrastructure or it may be anything i can do whatever i want just by impersonating myself or finding the identity creating some fake identity here i can take the entry into the organizations and i can start collecting the information about the organizations so i can do many things that is what the uh, that is what the hackers do by collecting this kind of information so privacy again they can breach the privacy here so again that's why they limited the information in public platforms nowadays right so if i try another one let's see maybe maybe google may block me because i did many multiple requests right let me take our company Mm, so you can say this is a running infrastructure. So what you can do when you get this IP blocking is you need to wait for a while, or one hour or two hour. Again, you can try it. Uh, if you, you can't go with multiple times here, that is what the things happen. All right. So yeah, you can use the Harvester tool of the older version, which is four point zero point three version, and you can collect the information. So if it is blocking the IP, just try to change the network or connect your hotspot. and do that again or restart the machine and do that it will work okay so this is how you can gather the employees information right and we have another method called google talks or google hacking we can say so what is google hacking here what is this google hacking database anyone so we call this as a google talks also so Google Docs, Docs, Docs is nothing but some operators. So we call them as a Docs here. So what is the use of these uh, uh, Google Docs means or Google hacking database in the sense? It is a kind of an advanced search you can say. Okay, it is a kind of an advanced search. Okay, so you can see here. So what is Google hacking database? So it is also known as a Google Docs. So it refers to the use of advanced Google search operators for uh, for uh, for creating a complex search queries, where to extract sensitive information or hidden information that helps the attackers find valuable targets information or find the vulnerable targets. So it is a collection of an advanced a uh, search queries. And techniques where to uncover the hidden vulnerable or sensitive information that may expose on the web. Right. So who created this Google hacking? So in December 2022, Johnny Long belong began to collect the Google search queries that under I can't cover the vulnerability systems, sensitive information, and even disclosures also. So even many penetration testers use these Google Docs to find some sensitive information. So, for example, for example, let me search for some IoT books here. So, when I do this query, right? So, when I do this query, so can you see? Are you able to get only the PDFs or any PPTs? No. Along with you, are getting some e-commerce site also, like Amazon.com, like some other sources. So, if you observe, it is not giving exact information what I want. Like it is not giving any books for me here. It's giving some ad sources. Yeah, some of them I'm getting, but not all of them. But when I use a Google Doc here, for example, let me go with file type, column, PDF. So when I run, if you observe, the results are now 432 only, and I'm getting only PDFs here. Can you see? Only PDFs. When it go with a filter, it will go with some uh, just, uh, like advanced search query and it gets exactly what we people are looking for. Can you see that everything is PDF only? Are you getting any any uh, Amazon page or any Flipkart pages here? No? Are you getting anything? Everything is PDF only. Like you can do many things. Like example, I want PPT now. So go with PPT. Mm. 
right so now you can see ppt everything is ppt only here presentation you can open that click you can see start downloading the ppt here i vote in education industry so related to ppt like that you can go with the docs you can go with the xml you can go with everything right so file type is nothing but here doc means it is a google operator this google operator is used to find exact book in which format you want for example let me take another example let me take uh, this one okay so if you see here try to understand the google doc here er segment is 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 a website is a company okay and site what site i'm used linkedin.com and what is the in text i mentioned join to view full profile so what this google doc do is it will try to give the profiles which are belongs to the er segment means it gives the employee details you can see when i do this query can you see you got my name first you can see right so you can see my profile here right and you can see a founder kartik chandra profile so on day one he took the session for you right so means he got the employee details here sai vigneshwar or kartik patari or aditya or kartik reddy teja kavya so you can see she is a graphic designer and security engineer and shashank cyber security intern ram babu like you can see you are getting you are getting the complete employee details so this google doc will help you to gather the employee details right so join to view full profile this is to see what are the uh, existing profiles we have in that in, in that company so on that basis it is getting for example let me go with the vitro let me search you can see kavya v technical lead vipro are you getting the information about the employees here rahul kumar software engineer siddharth right ir satish right so you can see the employees of the organization and their roles also you can see some of the roles you are getting project engineer right so like that you can find some sensitive information using these docs agree my point so you can note down this google doc everyone so whenever you want to find the employee details you can use this google doc right so if you want more more idea about the google docs what they do is for example let me go with the uh, login page let me search for login dot some php question mark id equal to means it is a parameter field for the website login pages so can you see you are getting the login pages or is it showing the how to create the login page so most of the time it is showing the how to create a login page but when i use a google doc which is like in url in url in the sense in url part it will show you the login.php now you can see all the login pages these are all the login pages and you want to find a login page in a specific site just view this site column let me go with some pakistan sites so let me find some pakistan sites so dot we can now you'll get only pakistan sites only now if you observe means it going for advanced filtration if i generally ask pakistan site it will give some unwanted sources also but when i use a google doc a search operator and if i mention this dot pk as an extension then you will get only that particular dot pk sites only and you will get the login pages also even just uh, let me remove this uh, php question mark id just i will go with login so you can see only login pages you can find of pakistan sites and even only pakistan file sites only dot pk dot pk and login pages everything is login only just you can click on that so you can see login page 
and this is the Pakistan sites. So like that, you can view the website and you can see is there any login page. Let me search for uh, Wipro. Is there any login page for Wipro? No. Sorry, Wipro.com, right? I need to mention .com here. So yeah, I can find some login page. Sign in. Login.microsoftonline.com is the source they are using. And there is another login page. Let me look for that. OneForce.Wipro.com. So I can able to find the login pages using these Google Docs. Means you can try to find some sensitive information about the target using these Google Docs. So if you are good in Google Docs, you can easily find a sensitive information in the target website. You can see this is a login page I got. Yes, I got some sensitive pages here. Where in future we can penetrate them and you can get the service access or server access. Right. So if you if you go for these things, if you Google it about Google Docs, you'll get a website called Exploit DB. So as a reference, you guys can go with this website for Google Docs. So when you click on that, so here you can see the latest exploits you can find, and bottom you can see there is a Google hacking database. So just click on that. It will use some references. So these are all the Google Docs. And here you can see the filters. So when you click on filters, here it will show you the category. So in category, if you observe the file containing the usernames or sensitive directories or web servers or vulnerable files, like whatever you want, you can search for them. Let me go with file containing the passwords. So you can see to collect any 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 target passwords. So these are the Google Docs which we have. So use them as a reference only. So for example, let me take this one, this particular thing. Okay, this is my Google Doc which I use right now. So what information will get by seeing this Google Doc? Can anyone tell me? what it is going to do. By using these Google Docs, what can I find? What this Google Doc do? Passwords. My password. No, it comes, I don't have any path. I don't have any username and password in that website. So when I run this, if you observe what I mentioned here, site. So what is site here? What is the site here? Control C dot. And in text I mentioned as a password. So what is in text here? That I'll show you. So let me run this Google Doc and see what output you guys are getting. So if you see, let me take a, a screenshot here. Right. So just see here, everyone. Let's try to understand. So when I run that Google Doc, this is the output I got. So here, site is nothing but so site is control C dot com, right? So when I give that site, it will search in this field as a control C. So this is site field. Okay, and this is in URL field. Previously, we used a Google Doc called in URL. Now it will search in this, and this field we called as a in title in title, and this field we called as a in text. That means. 
side is control c in text is password means it is asking for password here so it is asking for the password in which field in text field so are you got the password here you got the password there you got my point what i am trying to say are you guys able to follow that everyone so this is a google hacking database where it use some google operators for do a advanced search queries to extract the sensitive information or hidden information okay so using these google docs yeah so using these google docs we can easily find some sensitive information okay so for example let me use site colon control c dot com yeah we'll try we'll try I'll let you know control c dot com and if i use in type in title what happened when i use this google doc where you'll get the output in which field you'll get the output hmm. instead of in text i'm going with in title so when i go with you can see the username and password you can see in the in title field right in title field you can see here right so will it work for the amazon facebook or google or instagram mm -hmm. will it work for them no why why because they are secure so previously why we are getting in that websites in the sense they are not configured properly means they are it is it is not secured means they the developer didn't check that whether the data is disclosing on the client or the server side so when i give that query automatically it is displaying the data links the content in client side means as a user they can see the data whatever they have are holding on the server side also so it gives and why because it is misconfiguration they have not configured properly that server so due to that misconfiguration and miss security here easily we can see the data using these google docs and why i am not able to see this for instagram or all these things because they are secure they are not disclosing any information on client side what they are holding on the server but these control c it's not secure so i can able to find their information so that is why we need to penetrate so here i'm penetrating that whether the site is giving any sensitive information or not so even we go it's not giving any username and password right So again, this site, okay, they are secure. Huh? So they have any really code what they are using to get the password, fine. So some passwords, right? So yeah, it is closing like that. You can go with multiple sources. Like see this website, whatever the exploitdb.com I'm showing for you is just a reference. It's just a reference for you. So using these references, you can do or execute these uh, docs on your target sites. Got it? Right. So you can see there are many filters you can find it. So passwords or even you can find the error message, juicy information and find the juicy information you can see in URL, in title and even 
uh, you can find some other card information like using the index. You know what is the index pages? Huh? Any idea? So I'm looking for other. So index is nothing but where you can see the directories of the server. In server, they will hold the data right in folders. So that directory part, you can find it here, the parent directory. So you can see this website is there and you can see some websites I'm getting. For example, let me take this Manisha Tutors Bujo. So let me go with this. So you can see index page. So this is actually on server side, it should be there. So actually the index pages should not show to the clients actually, it should show to the, it should be on the server side, but we can able to see them because of these uh, uh, misconfiguration scenarios. So they have not properly secured that site. So that is why we can able to see their data, which is inside the server. Right, and I can see the data here. You can see the images, can you see the other card? Okay, it is asking password. Go with another one. All right, you can see other card, whoever uploaded in this website, you can see there are other cards. Even you can see the PAN card, the Xerox. So means this website, whatever this website, they are holding the client's data and that data, I can easily see that. So whatever the data the clients are uploading into their server, that I can see that by visiting the index page. Right, so your data will be indexed in this particular path. Right, so like that you can see, is there any sites which are disclosing any any other card details to the public so you can collect that information by running this index. Right. So you can see this is complete data which is there on the server side. Even not only other card, let me go with the webcam XP. So let's see if there are any live webcams. And there is some sites where you can find the live cameras. And you can use the Google Doc they are given as a reference. Live, you can use this Google Doc also. If they have authentication, then okay, they are secure. If there is no authentication, it is disclosing the information. I think we have source one. Let me go with source two. Where is night time? So it is complete dark. Fine. Another one. This is index. So we got some camera. So it's a live camera actually. It's live. And you can see the sources, you can change the camera angles also here. <coughs> These are live cameras actually. What is this place? Somewhere it's plus or something. So you can see the cameras which are in public and they are live and it is accessible from anywhere in this world but because they are having a static ip and running on a port 8090 so when it is when i'm having that user like ip address and port number we can easily access them and these are the live cameras in city basis korea united kingdom India. 
you can see this is live camera So these are the cameras where you can find it, the nearby places, so using these things. Right, so there are many cameras you can find. It. So actually they have to keep this username and password, can you see? So now this guy is using the username and password. So now maybe there is the authentication, so where we can't get that access directly. No, we are not getting it. So it is secure. Even if you see it's the same XP camera, but here I, I can directly access it because they are not having any, any username and password. But here it is asking for the username and password to access that server. To access this CCTV server, you need to use the username and password. So that is what security. Right. So that is how you can find some sensitive information using these Google Docs like uh, in detail, in URL, index, site, right, info, location, right. So there are many Google Docs you have. So as a reference, I'll do this uh, uh, Google hacking database uh, cheat sheet. So there's a website called StationX. I'm not getting StationX now. StationX is for the cheat sheet. So best website for cheat sheet actually. So you can use the StationX website. So here they'll mention you what is Google Docs. Okay. So what are the things you can do using this? So if you want any Google Doc, you can go with that. So for example, I want a, a password. So it will recommend some Google Docs for you. Okay. And here, what is the Google Docs command? Site means what, in URL means what, in title, file type, link, catchy, info, related on it. These are all the Google Docs we have. Docs means operators. So using these operators, it will go for some ser search query, means advanced search query, and get the information. They'll have the logs actually. Logs in the sense, whatever the activities you are performing, that will be stored on their logs events. So now, for example, you perform some scan on my machine. So if I'm using some monitoring tools, I can see from which IP address, what kind of packet they have sent, I'll receive that. So they monitor their network actually. So this is how they can identify. If they're not monitoring their network and if they are not using any security sources, then they can't get that information who is accessing their resources. Got it? So there is a team called SOC. So security operational center. So in, in organizations, what they do is uh, they implement this blue team. So SOC center, you can see there are hundreds of devices and they monitor continuously 24 by seven. So whatever the activities are happening, from where they are getting the request, from where they are getting the attacks or threats, they'll analyze them 24 by seven by using the SOC center. Okay, so now they deployed. And as a normal V guys, so we can't do anything. So we need to implement some antiviruses and we need to go with some authentication like this. Okay. Because we are not organization, we can't build, we can't build that much of uh, setup here. So whatever the activities we can perform, we can use or implement those things here. Okay. So that is what the SOC uh, is for. So using these operators, we can get the employee details too. Got it? Is that clear everyone about the Google Hacking Database? So you can find many things. Like even you can go with the, uh, like for example, you're looking for a course, for example, Python. So just use a site column. Most of these source contents they use in Google Drive. So you can see many Google Drive sources you got. So all are free. Introduction. I think 
it's a video on document i don't know yeah it is a video based course like that you can find any any courses tutorials and get that okay so get the content for free using this google doc got it everyone is that clear and it also in google docs so simply it is a kind of advanced search for it okay so according like uh, this advanced google hacking refers to the art of creating the complex search engine queries so queries can uh, retrieve the valuable data about a target company from google search results so through this google hacking an attacker tries to find the websites that are vulnerable to exploitation and attackers can use this google hacking database or a database of queries to identify the sensitive data and help in finding the required text or avoiding the relevant data okay so attackers can look at the specific strings of text such as specific versions of the vulnerable web applications or whenever you query without the advanced search operators is specified google traces the search terms in any part of the web pages right so to confine a search google offers the advanced search operators for it so these search operators helps to narrow down the search queries and obtain the most relevant and accurate output for you got it so that is what google docs do. so it helps you to get the data or search query and obtain the most relevant and accurate output what you guys are looking for and so do some filtering here and get exact data what you guys are looking for that is what this google hacking database do so these are the some techniques where they use to get the information about the target is that clear everyone right so as a reference you can go with that if you want to data in site base you can go with the site in url in title in index spaces right so we're done with the employee details and next we have web technology info gathering so how will you gather web technology about the target so simple technology in the sense what the site built with means what programming language they used what servers they are using what technology they are implemented for their websites so like this information we gather based on the web okay so for that i'm going to use a tool called Vaplizer. So Vaplizer is nothing but here uh, a, a tool which can identify uh, or find the web technologies information. Okay, and means what the site built with. Simply they'll get what the site built with here. So you can see what is the use of Vaplizer. So technology profiler. So Vaplizer is a technology profiler that shows you what websites are built with. This is what technology, what sources they are using to run that website. That information it will collect for you. Okay. And as well as go with the extension. So just type the uh, Vaplizer Chrome extension. It will get the website which is related to the Chrome. Just click on that. Just visit that website. And here you can see the Add to Chrome or Remove from Chrome option. Just click on Add to Chrome for you. For me, it is already added. So it is there in my extension in the top. For you, it is not there. So for the first time, if you're doing that, it will show you as add to Chrome. Just click on that. And here you can see the extension tool. So try to pin that. Try to pin that Vaplizer. So once you pin that, it will be added to your task taskbar. So your extension will be added to the task bar here. So now, once it is added, now go to your target website. For example, let me take my target, which is uh, uh, just, just give me a website. What do you guys want to search? Anyone?
if you take here tesla.com so if you see in tesla.com you can search if you see here in vaplizer it is showing some technology information like what programming language they are using right analytics issue like issue tracker advertising what sources they are using so catching what information javascript libraries what they are using ab testing purpose what they are using like look at good information for example let me take the wipro so just visit the wipro.com and see vaplizer here it is collecting the information so once you click on that you can see what information it is giving what is the cms analytics video player they are using security font right and even cdn they are using google hosted programming language they built with the java advertising they are using the linkedin ads javascript libraries they are using the fancy box and you are getting the version also here again you are getting the version also so 3.5 is online so you are getting any server information in this are you getting any server information no i think we are getting only what programming language they are using we'll try for some other tool uh same alternate of this app laser we have is a watson same it is also an extension let me use this tool but this tool is giving the server information can you see what 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 server what is the web server the wipro is using apache 2.4.37 2.4.37 did web laser give that information is just giving only programming language and some other details but here the what's run it is giving some less information compared to the web back oh, sorry map laser it is giving some less information but though it is giving some sensitive information like server information so now i can search for is there any experts available for that particular version in map laser or oh, sorry in web server basis in apache i will try for that experts and do on target and i'll try to do that on target here got it is that clear everyone so like that i have many alternate tools to find the information so my personal suggestion is don't stick for one single tool here try to go with multiple sources right so if you see the difference so applizer is giving only less information means giving the information compared to the uh, like these it is giving more information but not a sensitive information but whereas watson it is giving less information but it has given a sensitive information so my personal thing is just try to go with multiple sources and get the information so applizer you can see there are many tools we have to gather the information so build with adat pd ad apt or active campaign or applizer or zoom info right there are many sources we have to gather the web technology information here okay so applizer is the best source so that's why i choose that because we are going to go with multiple sources and get the information got it is it clear everyone is it clear so next we have catchy information gathering so catchy information gathering is nothing but here like just getting back to the uh, time and see how the websites are built with and what technologies they are holding and uh, is it possible to download that uh, tools in present world yeah you can do that so you can do all those activities by using a tool called a wayback machine so we call this as a internet action so what is the use of this wayback machine we observe it is created in 1996 and launched in public in 2001 it allows the user to go back in time and to see how the website looked in the past hence you can see how the websites looked in the past and what technologies they are using what versions of data they are holding you can get those data also that is what the power of this it's can it's, it's it's a non profit organization again okay so just visit this website wayback machine 
which is actual.org. And you can see here the mention, explore more than 866 billion web pages saved over the time. So over the time they have saved 866 billion web pages, not only pages, the websites, even the books you can find, you can find the videos, content related to that particular categories and audio software you can find it and even images also you can find it. Right. So let me go with the web base. So web base in the sense, simply here you can go with, let me go with the Kali website, Kali.org. So let's see in the olden days, how, how, like now what is Kali website look like? Present. So now the Kali Linux website look like this. So here you have the download option. And here you're looking for the major. You can click on that. Now you can download the Kali. Let me go for the old. And you can see when it started like data. These are the graphs you can see. And most of them started using Kali in 2019. You can see the uses there. And let me see in 2015. Let's get back to the 2015. And here you can see the snapshots snapshots in the sense at the time how the website has looked that replica or the image has been taken and stored in this form in this in this wayback servers so you can see on feb 8 6 31 am in the morning how the website looked like Can you see how the website looked like? In 2015, Feb A, this is how the website looked like. Now let's see what version they are using. Now you can see download is like this. Just click on downloads. And you can see, this is the Kali and they are using version 1.1.0. And you can able to download, yes, you can download that version. Just click on that, wait for a while. It will start downloading the file here. Not achieve that URL, okay. We'll go with another one. Another snapshot you can try. Maybe a bit slow, but yeah, it will start download the file, and you can get the old version of that Kali machine. Hence, you can get back to the older versions of that particular website and see what content they are uploaded at the time, what data they are holding. Hence, it's a kind of an information gathering. 
about the target in past, what technologies they use, what changes they made till now, or what are the things they upgraded. Like all this information you can collect by using these kind of sources. Got it? So that is what a way back mission. So where you can gather the catchy information about the target. So catchy in the sense the the temp data or whatever they that they used previously, the data information you can get it. And you can gather the information, whatever you want. You can analyze or build a strategy here, and you can get their uh or you can say tactics or techniques things. Right. So maybe it's slow because of my internet, I think so. So it will it will start downloading actually. Let it be is related. So that is what the catchy information gathering here. Got it? Is that clear, everyone? So you can just use that Wayback Machine. So that is one of the source we have to find the catchy information gathering, which is Wayback Machine. So you can just use that Wayback Machine and get back to travel in time and see what the websites are built with and what technologies, what data they are holding. You can find them. Got it? Is that clear, everyone? That is what a way back machine here. Time mm, Just try another one. Okay. And now <clears throat> we'll go with a, another one, which is uh, email analysis. So, how will you find that your mail bot? Oh, sorry. How will you check that uh, whether the mail is genuine or not? Like, is that a spoofed mail or is that a genuine mail? How will you find that? Spoofed in the sense, like, for example, there are two people. Like, imagine there is a, a, like Akhil and there is a Kartik. So we use these kind of tools like uh, Emikas. Like, you can see this is a tool. Now it's not working. Uh, like. Till last two months back it worked, but now I think it's, it, it was down. So you can see this website, for example, Karthik and mail is some year segment INC and two Akhil Reddy imagine and subject is regarding leave or uh, he'll write and he'll write some data here. Like hi, this is this is Karthik or something, they'll write the mail, blah, blah, blah. blah. And they'll say they pretend as so now Akil is getting the mail from ER segment, means that is from Karthik. But actually, it was not sent by the Karthik, right? You're getting my point? Using these a fake email spoofing sites, they can do the email spoofing attacks. Using these email spoofing sites, they perform the attacks, right? So imagine this is a kind of social engineering again. That means they manipulate you people. S means you're getting a mail from the Karthik, but actually it was not sent by the Karthik. It was sent by this website. Using this website, they have sent the mail. So how will you find this situation? Like how will you find that whether the mail is genuine or not? Anyone? You got my question here? Whenever anyone sends this proved mail, how will you guys find them? How will you go for this email analysis? What do you guys do at the time? Imagine this thing have done. Okay. So the Akhil is receiving the thing from Right, so imagine I have sent the mail, so you can see email sent successfully. Right, so now how will you find that mail got from the legitimate person or from third party? How will you find? Hmm? Anyone? What if someone sent a spoofed mail? How will you? Find that. Hmm?
Imagine I received this mail. Imagine I received this mail from some devil hunter. Okay. So I'll let you know how will you identify whether the mail is spoofed or genuine. Simple. So just open your target mail. So whenever you receive this mail, imagine this is a mail which I received. Okay. Where it went. Yeah. This is a mail which I received. So I need to confirm that whether this is genuine or is that a spoofed mail. So first I'll look for the header. So this is what we call as a header here. Okay, it is a header part. Okay. I think it's not that fine. So imagine this is a header. So header from where we are getting, we are getting the mail from some h table four seven seven at the rate gmail dot com. So by reconfirmation with the person, but not all the time, right? Imagine you are working in a bank. You got a mail from RBI. So to whom will call you in RBI? You know the who is a uh, Guy sending the mail in the RBI. We don't have any idea, right? So we look for their website and see what is the RBI mail ID. And the mail ID will be the same, what you received. So you think you are getting that mail from the RBI only. So on that basis, how will you find? It happened really. Uh, they did this trick for the Mayesh Bank. Have you heard about that Mayesh Bank scenario? If not, it is there in YouTube. Just go through this Mayesh Bank uh, attack. So they, they did social engineering. They said some malicious uh, phishing links to the uh, 200 people. In the two people clicked on that link and they have given their credentials of the server. So the attackers got the credentials of the, uh, the servers and they entered into the server and they got all the money. And they are not using any firewall, literally, the bank. There is no security measurement they implemented. They are using only less configured security sources only. So they are easy to break. So because of that uh, thing, they can easily hack that server. And because of these people not aware of these activities, so they have given. So they are not aware of these attacks. So because of that, it is easy to perform the social engineering attack and get the information. So if you see in this scenario, I'm getting the mail from, I'm getting the mail from, Gmail, right? I'm getting the mail from gmail.com. So what is the mail server of gmail.com? It will be mail.gmail.com. This will be the mail server. Okay. So to whom he sent that mail? Again, akhilatharek gmail.com. So he is also a gmail.com means his mail server is mail.gmail.com means here the mail exchanging is happening from mail server to mail server to mail server only right yes or no here the mail is sending from mail server to mail server only what if i use these kind of website like this kind of website is this a mail server or is that a domain? Is this a mail server or is that a domain? It is a domain here. Right. So whenever you send a mail, make sure you just click on these three dots. Can you see the three dots here? In this, just go to the show original. Means you're going with the uh, header, the email header analysis. So here in message ID, make sure here it shows you the from where you got from mail. So actually it is a 
uh, hdevil4717 at gmail.com means it's from gmail only so when it is gmail.com it says as a gmail.com then what will be the mail server mail.gmail.com but here it is saying the gmail.com but here it is saying the imikis.com imikis imikis.com that means you got the mail from it says here gmail only means hdevil4717 at gmail.com but here in message id it shows you as a emikis.com that means you got the mail from mail server of the gmail or from third party from where you are getting that mail here it says as a gmail but in message id it's saying the domain name as a emikis.com that means you got the mail from not from the gmail it's from a third party application you getting my point actually it is not working now uh, if it works i can show you that in practical basis but yeah they banned actually so you getting my point so it is simply from other applications whenever you, if i use any other domain and if i am sending the mail definitely you can see the domain name here from which domain you got the mail and or you'll get the domain mail server at least you getting my point so that means you got this mail from the third party from third party application not from the gmail means this person or whoever sending is not a genuine this proof this mail they pretended this as a kartik here but not kartik they pretending like that how i can say simple if kartik send it will be from gmail only from its gmail to gmail server so gmail server is nothing but mail dot gmail dot com no there are no no other websites actually the bank they are paid one we need to build a portal we need to get the some license and you need to install that it's paid basis we have not for free right and even if if you are hosting those kind of portals if government recognize they'll ban that it's an offense to do that activities right so make sure you need to check the body from where you are getting if it is a gmail definitely you'll get mail from gmail.com like this it is a genuine mail right so why because here they use the gmail.com so gmail.com mail server will be the mail.gmail.com but when they use this kind of website and if they send the mail here it shows you as a gmail.com but here definitely it will show you the domain information from where you got the mail from okay so at the time you can say that it's a spoofed one right and another thing will be these three spf dkm and dmars these are the email authentications these are the email authentication right so spf is nothing but sender policy framework dkim is nothing but the domain key integrity management and dmars is nothing but a domain message authentication reporting and confirmations so these three mechanisms will go for the authentication of the mail means whenever i use this domain and if i send the authentication will be failed why because this is not a server it is a domain so obviously the domain authentication will be failed so here you can see the spf as a you can see spf as a fail so whenever you find these three mechanisms as a fail then consider that this mail is a fake it is not a genuine mail you agree my point whenever you see this spf dkm and dmars records as fail in email then consider that the mail is spoofed or it's not a genuine mail you are getting that mail from the third party not from the gmail if it is a gmail definitely it will be authenticated and it will you as a pass here you can see how it is giving pass for me spf dkm and dmars but you can see this as a fail here that means they are from third party sources right so that is how you can identify the things right or, or you can see can you see here copy to clipboard so you can click on this copy to clipboard and here you can see this is complete raw data like uh, whether your spf is passed or not can you see it's a google domain here you get the actual domain that ip 
the sender ip everything the mail from its google server only so the header like you can see dkm is passed dmas is passed the authentication result is passed it's a mail exchanger google.com right so you can copy this header and you can use tools like mx toolbox mx toolbox so in mx toolbox when you visit this website here you can see the analyze headers so just click on that analyze headers you can see email header analysis now just copy that content here and click on analyze header you can see everything is passed can you see dmarc which is spf is passed dkm is passed dmarc complaint is passed so the combination of both spf and dkm is called dmarc and you can see here the mail exchanges happen from mail server to mail server only. Here the mail exchanging is happened from mail server to mail server only, not from the domain to mail server. If it is from domain to mail server, here it will show you the domain and here it will show you the mail server. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear? Right, and you can see everything is authenticated, and here we have complete header signature, and you can analyze it. Right. Is that clear? Anyone? Anyone having any doubts? So this is how you can go with email analysis. And how will you check your email got breach? Like your email is hacked or not? How will you check that? Anyone? So simply there is a website called have I been pawned? Have I been pawned out? <clears throat> you can see here. So just give your mail ID and see in which domain your mail got breached. So you can see here. You can see here. Almost my Gmail was breached in 10 data breaches. Means my domain was, sorry, my Gmail was in public, almost in 10 data breaches, my domain was there. Okay, getting my point? In 10 data breaches, my mail ID was compromised. And you can see what are the 10 data breaches. So, triple O web post, it was happened in 2015. And what data was compromised? Can you see that what data was compromised? And you can see that email address, IP address, names, and passwords. And even Domino's, it happened, Dub Smash, Exploit, Twitter, Zoom call. So these are the sites where I use my mail ID and they got data breach. And you can see my data was in public. And you can see what was the compromised data. Also. Right. And even you can check whether your that your mail was hacked or not. Hack in the sense it was in public domain or not. Right. So what you will do now? Now you got to know that your data your, your mail was in public and it was data breach. What you guys will do? What you guys will do? Hmm? You found out? The Gmail was in public and it got data breach by some websites. From your end, you are secure. You have a strong password, you are secure and everything, but it was happened from the server side. So what you guys will do? Now? What you guys will do? Simple, change the password. Right. So is your password secure again? How many of you use your password as your phone number? Like how many of you use your, your phone number as your password? 
Is there any guy who uses their phone number as their password or their date of birth? Hmm? Mm -hmm. So you know how much time it takes to crack that password by brute force methodology. Let me check. So what if you use your phone number, uh, sorry, if your, if your password as a password, how much time it is taking to crack that? What if you use a number? Hmm? A milliseconds, all right? All right, so what if I go with my name, like Akhil, one, two, three, how much time it is taking? One minute. So make sure whenever you're going with the password, it should be the combination. For example, let me take uppercase, uphill, and use some special characters, one, two, three, and go with some other special characters. So how much time it is taking to crack this password? So it is of, it has happened because of the combination of all the characters. And if you increase the password length, it increases more, more strength. So whenever you're going with the password setup, make sure it should be the combination of all the character. Okay. So like it should be the uppercase, lowercase, numeric, special character, all these things you need to use in your password. Okay. Is that clear everyone? How you guys will check your password? So make sure go with the two-factor authentication also. So even if your password got breach, there will be a two-factor authentication. So even if I if I know your passwords when I type that password also, it will go for the two-factor authentication. A two-step verification means you'll get the OTP or you'll get to uh, a verification code, right? So that will be very better to secure from these kind of attacks. So if, if your mail got breached simply, change the password and enable the two-factor authentication to your Gmails. So how many of you guys use the two-step verification for your mails? How many of you? If not, try to enable the two-step verification to your mails, everyone. So to secure your mails, you need to use the two-step verification here. Got it? Is that clear, everyone? And whenever you receive any links, make sure don't open that blindly through the emails. So that may contain malicious code. So if the sender is unknown, don't click on the links or don't open any file or don't download anything from the mails. So most of the sources they use to deliver the malware is mail ID only. Through mails only, they'll try to reach you people and they'll try to attack your systems. So be careful whenever you're receiving any mail here. Got it? Is that clear, everyone? Right. So next we have OSI ND. So OSI ND is nothing but here. It's an open source intelligence. So it is a framework here. So what this framework contains is it is a collection of all the data or information gathered from open sources. Means, for example, whatever we done till now. We use some sources, like for example, to analyze the emails, we use the tool or to gather the, uh, like whether my Gmail was hacked or not, I use this tool. Like that, it use all these tools in one plan. So OSI is stands for Open Source Intelligence, uh, which refers to the legally, legally, it's not illegal, legally, means whatever the data is available in public platforms, that information they'll gather, about the individuals or organizations for free public sources. Means it use every public sources for you to gather the information about the target. So simply I'll show you here. Just click on OSINT framework. 
Okay, you'll get a map here. You see there is a note. So just see what they mentioned in the note. OS identity framework is focused on gathering the information from free tools and resources. So the intention is to help the people find free OS and resources. And some of the sites include might request the registration or offer for more data for dollars or something. Right, means most of the data you'll get some of the portion for uh, free only or they'll ask for the registration. Right, but you should get at least a portion of available information for no cost. Means they'll try to give the open source tools for you to gather the information. And at the top, they have given some indications like T, D, R, M. So T is nothing but the tool. You need to install and run the tool and gather the information. T in the sense Google Doc based information gathering. R in the sense that website requires the registration. M indicates that the URL contains some search terms and URL itself must be edited manually. Means you need to give them. So for example, we did a, a domain enumeration, right? So just click on the domain name. So we did the who is information gathering. Can you see? It gives some tools for me here. Can you see that? So here we have the domain dosser and that gives some tools. Who is records information gathering? So if you click on domain dosser, just click on that. So we use this tool, central office, if you remember. Right. So like that, it gives the tools information. So whenever you want to perform any OS information, just you can come to the OS and and see what are the sources we have. And just go with that subdomain enumeration we performed yesterday and see what are the tools it is using. So, I think we use the harvester. Means it gives some open source platforms for you here. It gives the open source platforms for you guys here to gather the information. Like every source you can find it, like many sources about the emails, about the social networking platforms, the metadata extraction tools. What are the data? What are the tools we have to gather the metadata? So EXF tool. So you can use the tool and see what information it can give. So you can see it's giving the website. You need to download the tool and run. So Meta Google is there. Right. So like that, you have many other sources where you can find the information about that particular platforms using these open source Intel techniques. Okay. So OS scientific framework, which focused on gathering the information from free tools or resources. That is what the voice and the framework is. So whenever you want to check, is there any tool to find the information for these things, you can just come to this framework and see related to that particular category, just go with that category. If it is a social networking related, just go with the social networking. If it is email related, go with the email related. You can see breach data. So just now we use a tool called have a phone. Right? So like that, there is alternate like a dehashed for that it is asking for registration. Vigilant.pw, right? So there are many sources you have. Again, it is redirected into the dhash.com, right? So like that, you have many sources where you can gather the information about your target using this OS identity frame. Is that clear, everyone? Is that clear? Right. So we done with the email analysis and we done with the OS and the framework. So we'll be we left with a one tool called Mod. So this is your task for the next session. Everyone have to download the Multigo tool in your Windows. And let me know. Just give it a try. This is your assignment for the next session. So I'll tell you how to use the tool. But yeah, you have to do the assignment and get that. Okay. So we left with one tool, which is multi. So whatever we done till now using the sources, like uh, till now, whatever the DNS enumeration, email, employee details, Google hacking, web. So all these things you can done with this single tool. Using the single tool, you can do all these activities. That is what multi is. Okay. And coming back to the task. So whenever you do the task, like whatever the task you have done till now, the documentation, whatever you prepared from day one to till now. So what you guys have to do that is just go to the Google, just open your drive. So there will be a drive. Okay. Everyone, everyone just listen here. 
just open your drive and create a new folder yeah i'll send that i'll send that create a new folder just see here what you have to do so just create a new folder here so make that as a task or something whatever the name you want you can give that so go to that folder and now start adding the file the task whatever you done for example this is my task so just upload that and make sure make sure everyone now no one no one wants you need to upload the task in this particular folder only everyone have to upload the task in this folder i will get and i'll see that directly so no need to fill the form every time for the first time only you have to fill the form everyone for the first time i'll share the form in the telegram group okay so from there you can get the link okay so try to upload that form everyone okay so once you upload that form i'll get the data like your links and one more thing i need to say is share sharing things should be in public so when you click on share here it will be a restricted access make sure keep that in anyone and copy that link and fill that form okay so i think i'll share that form for you in chat box so just go with your name college name the roll number email id the contact and the drive link see make sure when you are uploading the task to the google drive make sure you should give the public access to that link okay and here you have to paste that link okay is that clear everyone so now onwards you need to submit the task in the drive got it clear everyone so i'm try to share the link and even i'll share that in the uh, telegram group also so everyone like from the beginning from the beginning whatever the task you guys have done try to upload that on the google drive folder and make that folder in public and share that link in the form is that clear go with your genuine name everyone so based on that only you'll get the certification remember got it so you can see it's done for the vienna college so like this i'll get your data so i'll get your drive link here so if it is in public i can able to see your document see how they did the task right so same you also so do that for this first time only submit this form so next one was just to go to the drive upload that form it will be there in my sheet okay i can see that from my sheet okay so do that whoever done with the task just submit that in the drive and go with the form so even i have shared the form in the chat just just check with that and even share to your friends also okay so we'll have with one thing which is multi code tool and make sure you'll have an exam tomorrow inform to your friend tomorrow we'll have an exam so try to attend on module 1 and module 2 on introduction to ethical hacking on reconnaissance module you have an exam tomorrow so prepare and come so tomorrow we'll discuss about the multi code tool and we'll go with the exam okay is it clear everyone any doubts all right then that's it that's it for today guys so thank you thank you for attending the session have a great day see you see you tomorrow yeah thank you thank you guys exam pattern it will be the mcq so and go with the feedback everyone
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Maldiva tool will be there for Mac OS also. You can check that. Tomorrow we have a zero review, sir. What are the exam? Zero review means what? In college? Means you won't attend the session tomorrow. About project, I didn't get that. Like you're doing a project, so you need to go with a reviewer tomorrow. So you're not you're not attending the session tomorrow. Tomorrow exam topic will be on module one and module two, introduction to ethical hacking and uh, reconnaissances, whatever we did till now. Okay. So what project you guys are doing? What was the project you guys are doing? Okay, fine. <clears throat> So is your college is doing the project or what exactly? Like you guys are asking me about the project.
in montego it will be like kali will be in, by default it will be there in kali but uh, i won't suggest in kali well, because again montego will use more processor there again your kali will use more processor so it will be very slow so try to use montego directly on your windows much better again you need to run the kali for that it requires the memory like that for project title send me the link project task Always faculty are asking for project title and question. Okay. Is that a major or minor project? Which one is that? Okay. So what are you thinking about? Is anyone said that we'll, leave, we'll go with the projects also here? So have you guys choose the project then?